And that leads us to the main event. Samoa Joe versus MJF for the AEW World title. Uh, MJF is the whole entrance video where the locals talk about how tough Long Islanders are, how MJF is their scumbag, how great he is in the ring and in bed. He's their scumbag. And the crowd likes Samoa Joe, but boy, do they love Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And they were happy to see, to see Max's best friend, Adam Cole, when MJF brought him out, which should have been a warning to absolutely everyone out there. So uh, they do some stuff. Uh, Max is trying. He avoids a muscle bust for the first time. But as he's trying to skin the cat back into the ring, even with one arm, he gets kicked in the head mid-move. And then Joe plants him with a muscle buster on the apron, which looked absolutely lethal. That was very ter terrifying. And uh, they're going back and forth. And uh, Max gets his salt of the earth. Joe reverses that. Gets an arm bar on the bad shoulder. The crowd audibly groans because their hero's bad arm is being worked over now. They're very sad about this. Cole encourages Max to get the ropes. Max finally does. The ref gets bumped, and Max is very happy because he's a scumbag. This is his chance to cheat. He gets a low blow, gets the F5. Yes, the F5, I said, on the Samoan Giant. He makes a cover, but the referee is late to get over there, and so Joe finally kicks out. MJF calls for the Dynamite Diamond Ring, but Adam Cole can't find it. He's leaning through his pockets. It's been misplaced. He finally does. By the, but by the time uh, MJF gets this ring, Joe is recovered. He locks in that choke. And MJF is doing everything he can to fight out of it. He even does the Bret Hart run up the turnbuckle cradle spot. Gets a near fall, but Joe hangs on, rolls him over. And uh, we get what from the from the prior match, the, the, the arm dropping three times. They establish that if this arm drops three times, this match is over. And he drops Max's arm once. He drops Max's arms twice. And he goes to drop the arm a third time, and the arm lands, like, on Joe's body. It's not on the mat, or it's on uh, Max's leg or something. And so there's a delay and a hesitation on the referee's part. But he determines, well, it's not in the air. I guess that counts as dropping. And he rings the bell. Samoa Joe chokes out Max clean. He wins the AEW World title on the very last show of 2023. He's the champion going into 2024 in his hometown. Wow. That I did not see coming. I was uh, flabbergasted. I looked like uh, I looked like Bryce with that arm dropped the third time. I was like, what? And then he looked around and he went, what? Well, fuck, I guess I got to ring that bell. And he rang the bell and the fans are stunned. And, you know, I had, I, there were people who were like, ah, top babyface should never lose like this. Bullshit. Top babyface can lose like this. Top heel can win like this. Especially when the story has been that this guy is a physical wreck. AEW tells this story all the time. Told it with Orange Cassidy. They've told it with a number of people. Getting beaten up. Getting beaten up. It's worse and worse and worse. Like, throughout the match, the story is he can't lift his arm over his head, so he grabs his own arm, and he's lifting his own arm over his head to do spots. He's destroyed. And uh, and he went in there with Samoa Joe, and he got beaten. And, you know, they're going to sell it big because he's going to be off TV for a while. And I thought it was a very good match. I thought that, uh, you know, good finish. I couldn't believe the finish, but it was a good finish. And, uh, you know, now we'll see... How they uh, how they managed to kill some time because in fact the devil they hit the ring afterwards devil's henchman LLC and they hold down both guys and one of the henchmen is going to hit Max but Adam starts screaming hit me instead and Max hears this and he screams don't you dare hit him you hit me instead so the lights go out they come back on and Adam is sitting in the chair and the guys behind him unmask Roddy the kingdom and wardlow and max is crying it couldn't be you and then wardlow grabs him and power bombs him adam grabs the devil's mask out of his bag because in fact the devil's mask got taken out of max's bag in his locker room which he only shared with one man and at the end of the day that man was adam cole and of course you know, Max is injured. Adam is real badly injured. And I don't know how long it's going to be before Cole comes back. But they got a lot of time they got to burn before they can get that match going. So I presume that Max is out for probably like a month. Makes his big return to the next pay-per-view. 
first match, he's got to probably, you know, beat Wardlow or maybe he gets a partner and they go after the tag team titles first, but you got to go through Roddy, you got to go through Wardlow, you got to go through the Kingdom to finally get to Adam Cole, who by then hopefully will be fine. And I thought, you know, logic-wise and storytelling-wise, I thought it was a solid payoff. A bunch of people that don't like MJF, including Wardlow. And, you know, I heard from people in the building that didn't like it. I heard people that left very, very unhappy. Hometown guy got beaten and they expected something bigger for the devil. But I thought it was a, a good, solid payoff. And we will see where they go. I thought this was great. I mean, we've been trained to believe in AEW that the home guy always wins, especially when it's a big face. And this was fantastic. Except that hasn't this... happened much lately. I hate to interrupt, well, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. true. Like they've been beating hometown people gen- left and right over the last six months. Yeah, yeah. But that is the general thing. So this was a big surprise. And it was, I mean, it really was. When that arm dropped the third time, we were like, well, was that a mistake? What's what's going on here? And and it was a real shock. And it was fantastic. And I'm I'm not unhappy with Joe having the title. I think that's that's great. Um, and... I, everything that followed, yeah, okay, maybe it was the obvious choice. Sometimes the obvious choice is the right choice. I think it was here. I think the for story, for everything else, this works really well. I kind of like the idea that these people, that he's wronged, especially Wardlow, who, you know, arguably Wardlow kind of got, it got forgotten in the shuffle after everything at Double or Nothing two years ago. Uh, this is a chance to put all that right. And I think it works really well. I'm interested to see where this goes. This is another heel faction in AEW that's going to sit next to, you know, Callis's family and various others. So I don't know where this goes, but I, I'm I'm interested to see where it goes. And please take MJF off TV for now. As much as I think he's great, he needs to heal. The guy's beat up. Give him some time off. Obviously, Adam currently is beat up. So, but we've got guys that they can send out there. They can do stuff with in the meantime. And, you know, we can come to that match, whether it's going to be at the next pay-per-view, whether it ends up at double or nothing, they've got time to build to that. So I didn't hate this at all. I thought it it was good and it worked. And um, it was the obvious choice, but it was the right choice. I think anything else would have felt like a bit of a cop-out. So I got two thoughts on this before we uh, say goodnight. Uh, so I the, the the reveal was great. I think I I, I do think it got over because Lance and I were talking about this. Our reveals usually fall flat. I, I think it it, uh, it it got over and it worked. And it, you automatically understand why all these people hate MJF because they all have the problems with them over the past year at various times. I don't quite understand what the devil's plan has been for the past three months to just put on Halloween costumes and beat up a bunch of people around Max. But then wait for him to lose the title on his own and then reveal themselves. That's, uh, I don't quite understand how uh, that works out. But uh, the other thought here is I'm looking here. If you go to the uh, All Elite Wrestling ro- roster at AllEliteWrestling.com, you find all sorts of all sorts of names. There's Parker Boudreaux is still on here. Anthony Agogo is still on here. But you know who is not on this roster page? Yes, come Maxwell on. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Don't be a mark, Vinny. Come on. I am, I am merely stating a fact. Yes, yes, they're really playing it up. Effect. They're playing it up everywhere except on TV of late. Yes. Well, we'll see what happens on Dynamite. It's a, it's a big show. So, yeah, this in the end turned to be a mixed bag of a show. Uh, still, uh, there was some great stuff at the end, but on, on the whole, one of AEW's weaker pay-per-views. Uh, but it was very newsworthy, and it did leave you asking the question of what's going to happen on Dynamite when you tune in Wednesday night. Well, Wednesday night should be a big show. I uh, I am not reporting this because I don't know, but I would be I would be very surprised if Mercedes didn't debut on Wednesday. I think we're going to get that, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to get Andrade on Raw Monday, and so uh, I think Andrade being on Raw makes uh, Mercedes on Dynamite even more likely, so they can do the big uh, you know reaction to one jumping ship and then the other jump ship. So uh, should be a very very big week. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.